Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add three very important features in your minimal APIs in .NET 6. Those are Swagger support, authentication and authorization, and also validation support. Those are things that usually come out of the box in a normal MVC or web API if you want, but in minimal APIs, you have to opt into those features. And many of you in my previous two videos talking about minimal APIs have actually asked, how can I do those things in this context. So in this video, I'm going to show you just that. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and the notification bell to get our latest when I upload a new video. So let's take a look at what we have currently. We have a very simple customer's minimal API, which you can list all customers. You can uh, get a customer by ID, create a customer, update a customer, and then delete the customer. Now we have a repository here, which just has things in memory. Uh, here is just a list of customers in memory and then our record for the customer. That's all the code we have. Now, many of you ask, how can I wire this thing up in services on how can I add this middleware, which basically is the foundation for everything we're going to do in this video. So first and foremost, I want to explain how to read this file to know where things are going. The first thing I want to show you is this. So usually in an MVC all structure, you have the startup.cs file, and that has two methods, configure services, and configure, which is where the middleware goes. So looking at this, you can think of this as the uh, configure services area. And then that area exists up until we call build and we get an app out of it. And then from that point on, you're essentially in configure mode. And that's where all the middleware and all of that goes. So once you make this separation, then everything should just come together because we are using things that are also applicable and usable in the startup.cs structure and the old MVC structure. Nothing changes under the hood on that front. It's just that the way you register endpoints now looks like this, and that's it. So let's start from the very first thing, which is Swagger support. So I'm going to go to NuGet, and I'm going to go browse and search for net core, and I'm going to find the package and install it. And accept any licenses I have to accept. Oh, nothing. Oh, yeah, here we go. I need to accept that. Yep, and now the package is in. And all you need to do is the following. First, you need to say builder.services.add endpoints API explorer. So that's the first thing you need. It's a prerequisite. And then you need builder.services.add swagger zen. That's it. And then we go below that in the configure area, like we would do before. And we're going to say app.use swagger. Here we go. And then app.use swagger. UI. And really, that's it. There is nothing else to it. I'm going to go ahead and run this API now. But Swagger will now automatically detect all those endpoints. And I'm actually going to bring Swagger up in the browser. And as you can see, Swagger is loaded up and it has all the endpoints. I can execute it. I'm getting a 200, nothing in here um, with all the basic data needed. Now, since we're using I requests in some responses, Swagger is not able to automatically detect, for example, in this get endpoint, what this endpoint should return. It can detect the parameters we require, namely the ID here, or in the post method, the, 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 the schema, which is the ID and the full name, but it doesn't know what the response looks like. It knows what it is in this get all endpoint, get all customers, but the reason why it knows that is because in here, Instead of returning an I result, as you can see here, using the results.created or results.ok, we are using the JSON object, the object itself, straight away, which works. But if you want to do anything more um, interesting, for example, with status codes, then if I go ahead and change this to uh, returns results.ok, and I rerun this and I go back to Swagger, then as you can see, we lost this information. So how do we add it back? Well, I'm going to show you here. and by the way, this is still in preview for me and I haven't used the latest RC yet, meaning some of the things I'm going to show you here are not supported in this version. By the time you watch this video, they're most likely going to be supported. So I'm going to show you the proper way and the old school way. In the old sort of way of things, what I would do is I would use attributes. So I would say produces response type, and then I would specify first and foremost a status code. So for example, here this produces a 200 status code because it's okay. And then I can also specify the type. So I can say type equals type of, and this returns a customer, so customer. And this is still supported here. You, you can do it. Now, admittedly, 
This looks very weird, at least to me. In C sharp 6, attributes are now supported on these types of delegates, but they look off. I don't know. Just for me, they don't they don't look right. So what you can do, or at least what you will be able to do in the RC, I think you could do it before as well, but they changed things around in this preview, so I can't do it. But you'll be able to say produces here in a fluent manner, and then you'll be able to specify what this uh, specific map get method is producing. However, for now it's not supported, so I'm just going to comment it out so we can test it. And since this doesn't return any other method, this would always return uh, OK, even for an empty list. I can run this API, and now if I refresh, I should be able to see that, yes, this now picked up my example, and it is returning this uh, schema as provided or as detected by the produces attributes. So attributes are still supported here. You can use them. However, again, my preferred approach is the Fluent API approach. Anything else related to Swagger, any customization on the interface or the middleware or the service registration, this all stays the same. So if you were using some sort of bearer token mechanism in Swagger to authenticate to your um, API, then that doesn't change. And actually, we're going to say it in this video because the next thing I want to show you is authentication and authorization. And again, this is still the same thing as with MVC. This doesn't change. Treat this area as the configure services method and this area as the configure and you're all set. Let's go ahead and add the basic services. So first you want to say builder.services.add authentication exactly as you would do in the old type of thing and then add authorization. Here you go. And now you have the same authentication authorization support. Now, of course, this registers the services. We want to go to the middleware as well. And because we don't want Swagger to be behind the authentication or authorization, we want to be publicly accessible, at least in this case, in your case, you might want to hide it. Then we can go ahead here and say app.use authentication and also app.use authorization. Here you go. And now authorization is supported by default the API is accessible. Now, what I haven't done yet is I haven't added a default scheme for authentication. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And a very common way to authenticate against APIs is uh, JOT, so JSON Web Tokens. So I'm going to go here. Actually, that's the first thing returned. So I'm going to go ahead and add it. It's this package, Microsoft.ASP.NET-Core.Authentication.JOT-Bearer. So I'm going to add that real quick and accept any licenses. Yes, yes. And what I can do now is say JOT-Bearer defaults. I'm going to import that and authentication scheme. And I've added that. And I can also say add jot bearer. Here you go. And now I have effectively a default scheme. So if I go down here and like if you remember, attributes still work. So the attribute we want is the authorized in this scenario. Then we can run the API. So if I go on Swagger and I call that endpoint right out, I'm getting a 401 unauthorized. That's because this thing needs me to be authorized. However, like I said before, Attributes is not really my preferred way with this approach. So what I want to do instead is use the extension method require authorization. And once I do that, I can go back in that um, Swagger page, refresh, try it out, execute, and this is returning now 401. And in my opinion, this fluent approach, again, suits nicely to the minimal API concept. And it chains with anything else like produces like other things you can chain. Now, the problem with this is that it requires you to add explicitly authorization requirements on every one of your endpoints. And you might not want to do that. You might want by default to require authentication authorization actually to everything. So how do you do that? I can go ahead and delete this. And same way you would do on anything else in MVC, you can use the options delegate here and say options.fallback policy equals, and I'm going to just paste the rest because it's just boring to see me typing. We want the authorization policy builder. Then we're going to add the authentication scheme we want. In this scenario, it's the one we registered up here. We're going to require an authenticated user, and then we're going to build the policy. And now, without having the request authentication, I can go ahead and run this and go back to Swagger, refresh that page, and now any endpoint should uh, require... Here we go, 401. It should require authentication. Now, how do you allow anonymous users? Remember, previously we had the allow anonymous attribute. In here, we have an extension method. So dot allow anonymous. It reads nicer. I prefer it. So if I now add this, we have explicit anonymity or non-authentication for endpoints. So if I click that endpoint again, 200. It doesn't require authentication. It allows anonymous users. 
So it's very nice and tidy and everything follows the same idea of extension methods here. I won't bore you with the rest. It's literally the same. Now, one of the things I want to show you if I move on to validation is that here in this version, if I refresh, there is no lock up here to allow to authenticate with a JWT uh, token to actually use this endpoint. So how do we add that in the same way as you would do in the old system? You would go to the add swagger gen method here, and then you would use the delegates. There we go and add these magic lines. I've shown this in multiple videos. I won't bore you again with writing all this by hand. That's why I'm pasting it. If you want the source code, you can use the link in the description to get it. So once I add this and if I run this project now, I can go back in Swagger, refresh, and now we can authorize with a JSON web token. And that's it. You have Swagger support with authorization ready to go. Now, the last thing, which is one of those things that many of you actually requested because it's one of the main things that is missing with uh, minimal APIs is validation. And actually, Damien Edwards has made a great little library called minimal validation, which I'm going to link in the description if you're going to go and yoink that because it tries to, to a degree, I guess, mirror how the uh, previous validation works. It's not quite the same, but it's a very minimal and streamlined approach. However, I never used MVC's built-in validation mechanism with the model state ever. So for me, it was always add fluent validation and wire that up. And that's what I would do with minimal APIs as well, because it's just so more fluent and more convenient in my opinion. So first I'm going to create a, a folder called validation. And of course I need to go to NuGet and add fluent validation. I'm going to search for that package. If you don't know what this package is, I highly recommend you check it out. It's by Jeremy Skinner. You can check a video I have already in the channel showcasing it. And I'm going to add this ASP.NET Core and this dependency injection extension packages. And the reason why I want to do that is because it will allow registration by convention on my validators, which really streamlines the whole approach. So add that and then add this. Here you go. So let's say we want to validate in this customer's um, record that the full name cannot be less than, I don't know, one character, two characters, something like that. Something to just prove how validation works. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new item here, and this will be a customer validator. And this will extend the abstract validator with the customer as the T type parameter here. So add that and add this. And now in the constructor, and let me just quickly make this uh, public so it can see it properly. And now in the constructor here, what I'm going to say is rule for the full name property, and it should be not empty. And also minimum length should be let's say two, it has to be longer than two. So that's my validator. And now let's wire it up. And again, wiring up exact same thing as with the old world. So we can go here and say builder dot services dot and use those extension methods that we added from that NuGet package. So add uh, fluent validation, add that. And then say fluent validation dot register validation from assembly containing a specific type, in our case, the customer type, do that here. I know that's a bit long, but that is enough to register fluent validation. That, that's it. And now what we can do is whenever we want to validate, namely here in that create customer endpoint, all I need to do is inject. Let me just make this a new line so you can see better. Inject the I validator with the type I'm validating. And that is it. Now I can use a validator here. The way to do that is you can get a validation result by using the validator dot validate method. And we're going to validate that customer. Here we go. And then if that validation result is not valid, then we're going to collect the errors. So errors are validation result dot errors dot select. We're going to get just the text messages from that. So um, dot uh, error message. Here we go. And actually, let's select them in uh, an object and say uh, new object errors equals and then that and close that. Yeah, that should be enough. And now we can say return results dot bad request with the errors as the object. And that's it. Now you have validation. So let's go ahead and test this. I'm going to run this and go uh, in Swagger. Oh, actually, for that to work, I have to allow anonymous here because by default, it won't allow me to call it without authenticating. So let's go back and rerun that real quick. So refresh that, go here, click that, 
and try to create a like Nick Chapsus. Here we go. So this is a proper uh, thing. Should create it. Yes, that's created. 201. Seems good. Now let's say that the name is Nick and change that to a five. And if I execute it, now I'm. Wait a second. Oh, did I set the minimum length to two? Yeah, two is acceptable. So I want to go back and set that to something that is one character. So change that to two, run it again. As you can see, errors, the length of full name must be at least two characters. You entered one character. Nice, friendly message. And if I leave this empty, this should also fail. Yeah, this is, it should not be empty. And also the length blows up. Oh, this is a wrong formatting. This should not be an array like this. Let's go ahead and quickly fix that. So in the program.cs, this should not look like this. This instead should look like this. Here we go. So run this again, refresh. Customers do that. Empty string, call that endpoint. Yeah, that's more like it. So an array of full name must not be empty and the length of, the, of this thing needs to be more than um, two characters. So great. That's all there is to that and then yes if you just have that on every single endpoint it will bubble up and not look nice but you can actually uh, extract this logic into an extension method or a separate method and then only return what is not valid or you can even extract this whole logic to a middleware and then do that before you even get in this method there you go that's all there is to it swagger support authentication authorization and validation all in one video for minimal apis now you can just build on top of it and any other thing you want to add works the same way. If you want to add mediator, works the same way. If you want to add anything, works the same way, auto mapper or whatever. So don't be afraid. Just remember, this is the configure services area. This is the configure area and you're going to be fine. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.